The Lus Plateau is the cradle of Chinese civilization. At 640,000 square kilometers, the area is approximately the size of France. Located south of the Mongolian steppe in the Gobi Desert, and east of the high Tibetan Plateau, the region has long been known as the most eroded place on Earth. Its main feature, giant gullies winding through the exposed soil. When we came to this place in the Lois Plateau the first time, we were all really shocked. You know, we thought, oh my God, you know, well, how can, how can ever anybody try to rehabilitate an area that is so huge and so fundamentally destroyed ecologically? What has happened here is that originally you had a complete vegetation cover with a fully intact hydro cycle. All the rainfall that fell down stayed where it was initially. It slowly infiltrated into the ground, was absorbed by the root system, went into the groundwater and eventually drained into the Yellow River over a long period of time, hundreds of days, between a rainfall event and by the time the water ended up in the Yellow River. As the vegetation cover was removed gradually, the runoff increased dramatically every century, every decade, to the point where now when it rains, 95% of the water immediately is lost to the, to the environment where it's, where it's coming down. Immediately it runs off in a gully, takes a lot of the topsoil with it, and ends up in the Yellow River. So you have a situation where literally 95% of the water is gone. And this is the reason why this area is so dry, why the rainfall has been decreased, why the vegetation cover can hardly be sustained right now because everything is so dried up. It's hard to imagine that at one time this was a mixed forest and grassland ecosystem, so nurturing that it gave birth to the largest ethnic group in the world. Now, through new understanding and their own hard work, the people of the Lus Plateau are exploring a path toward a sustainable future that provides an opportunity for even the poorest people to escape from subsistence farming and leaves future generations with the hope of intact ecosystems. The Yellow River begins high in the Tibetan Plateau and meanders through northern China to the sea. The river is also known as the Mother River because along its banks the Chinese civilization developed. In this place, there is evidence of humans and their ancestors for a million and a half years. Settled agriculture began here around 10,000 years ago, perhaps second only to Mesopotamia. As the early Chinese dynasties grew in power and sophistication, they needed more and more resources. Great cities and a great civilization emerged, with little thought about what was happening to the environment. As has happened in so many places, the initial impacts were caused by tree cutting, and eventually the forests were gone. Without trees, the people tried planting crops on steep slopes. And finally, they free-ranged ever more goats and sheep until the area was almost completely denuded.
Each year, over a billion tons of sediment choke the Yellow River. It can almost seem comical, but it's not funny. And that's not the only impact. Dust storms originating in the Lys Plateau affect the entire of Northeast Asia and beyond. The dust can be tracked by satellite around the world and exacerbates the greenhouse effect, increasing human impact on climate change. In 1995, when this documentation project began, we found a fundamentally degraded ecosystem. The first thing we noticed was an absence of vegetation cover. As we learned more, we found that soil stability, natural fertility, the ability to absorb water, and the ability to sequester carbon had all been lost. The Luce Plateau illustrates the fact that human impact without environmental awareness leads to ecosystem collapse. The disrupted ecosystem meant that for generations the people endured floods in the rainy season, followed by drought for the rest of the year, and often famine. The people living on the Lys Plateau were trapped in a tragic cycle of poverty and ecologic degradation, where their own unsustainable actions were destroying the environment. The harder they tried to scratch out a living, the more the environment was impacted. Without completely changing their behavior, there was no possibility of them ever escaping from poverty. This was China's sorrow. Armed with a new understanding of the importance of intact ecosystems, and supported by the Chinese government and international development agencies, this generation is being asked to reverse a trend that has developed over thousands of years of unsustainable agricultural practices. While this may seem to be an almost impossible task, the evidence of the past decade is suggesting that it may indeed be possible. Attention must be paid. If they succeed, then we are witnessing a paradigm shift in human consciousness and behavior that has implications far beyond the Lys Plateau.